Business Today, in association with Telcom. Celebrating our heritage, we are stepping into a bold new future. Join us. Telcom, moving with you. Indeed, good afternoon. Welcome. This is KTN Business Today. My name is Peter Okaba, and over the next one hour, we'll endeavor to bring you up to speed on matters making business headlines, not just here in Kenya, but indeed across the region and right across the world. Today, we are coming for, uh, to you from several different places, of course, bringing you up to speed on the political situation that continues to unfold towards the election. The, of course, NASA team is live in Narok. We will, of course, be uh, going live to that event as it continues to unfold. What exactly is the situation on the ground? Uh, who is well, hot on the tail of the politicians on that event and will be coming to us live from that area. That, of course, is later on. Also on this show, the fact that we have an update for you on Kenya's Ali Oil Export Scheme. What is the status? Well, a press conference a few minutes ago by the CS4 Energy. Well, Mr. Kitter, put that into perspective. We'll be bringing you an update on that as the show continues. Also here today, with us in studio to discuss the upcoming uh, well, World Cooperative Day, of course, vis with the political situation and the manifestos that have been put out. What is the linkage between SMEs, livelihoods, and the cooperative movement? Two experts in studio, they will of course be on uh, uh, later on in the show to talk about what exactly is the perspective on uh, that. Uh, Ali Nur, he is the CS for well, he is the BS rather for cooperatives and is an expert ready to lend us his expert perspective on that. He is accompanied by the person in charge of the cooperative movement here in Nairobi. She is also here to be able to give us insight into what to expect on Saturday and of course what is being done to drive that forward. Well, as usual, we are coming to you from uh, the internet and today we have a Twitter poll question and we are asking you to talk to us. Of course, the fact of the matter is that we are interactive and the hashtag is KTN Business Today. So do go out there, talk to us, and give us your feedback. The hashtag is Business Today. Reach out to us on at KTN News. You can, of course, reach me directly on at Peter Akaba. And the question of the day is, do you think the government was overly ambitious with the early oil program? Again, do you think the government was overly ambitious with the early oil program? Give us your perspective on that and we will be sampling that conversation as the show does go on. Well, to our first story of the day now, and Kenya's early oil export pilot scheme lies in Tata's barely a day to the self-imposed deadline to start transporting oil for export by road from Turkana with oil explorer Talo now threatening to suspend its operations in Trukana over insecurity. The latest developments have set off a chain reaction that is expected to see the government announce suspension of the export plan as happened just a few minutes ago. Indicate that for close to a month now, Talo employees have been unable to gain access to two of its sites, where 40,000 barrels of oil that form the first batch of export crude that is supposed to be transported to Mombasa is stored. Talo, in a letter sent to the Trukana County Commissioner, protested at what it called economic sabotage. Its employees have been barred from accessing Nakulula's Talo Community Resource Center, Ngamia 3 and Ngamia 8 oil fields. Ngamia 3 and 8, we have established, have the 40,000 barrels of already pumped crude which is stored in tanks awaiting evacuation. They were to form the first batch of Kenya's oil find to be transported to the coast on this coming Saturday. Further, one of the seven companies contracted to upgrade the Kitale Trukana Road, which leads to the oil fields, has suspended works after three of its employees were attacked. In a letter sent to the Kenya National Highways Authority, Kenya, Rala Construction on May the 20th said, it had discontinued the construction of the road upgrade to the oil fields until the security of its staff was guaranteed. 
This was after one of its employees sustained gunshot wounds in the said attack. The events have added more controversy to what is turning out to be an oil curse for the country, even before full exploitation of this sought after resource. A source familiar with the goings on said, it is suspected that the banditry against the oil scheme is political and is meant to stall the process by creating fear. Stakeholders, quote, wa mafuta, wali yelewana ugawaji wa rasilimani ya mafuta. Na hii ndiyo bunge ilipitisha na mkataba ukaja kwako kuweka sahihi. Pingamizi yetu ni upunguzaji ya rasilimani ya, ya, ya percentage. Mimi sio mimi napitisha sheria ni bunge. Mimi ni kuweka naweka kidole. Alafu mjinga anakuja kusema hapa ati mimi nafanya mambo ya Hiyo hey. siwezi na msiwe watu ambao mtasikia porojo. Mukisikia mambo ya porojo sio uhuru watapotea ni nyinyi mtapotea. Trukana leaders have been pushing for 10% of the oil share benefit but the government wants it reduced to some 5%. In January, President Uhuru Kenyatta declined to assent to the Petroleum Exploration and Production Bill. Peter Wakaba, KTN News. Well, of course, we can reliably inform you that just a few minutes ago, the government has indeed postponed the move to start exporting oil from Trukana. Of course, this is ostensibly to, well, enable them to have time to put in place the legal requirements, including the law that will govern the well, revenue sharing, among other things. Of course, that story there, having tried to put into perspective the background that has led to the situation we are in today. Well, moving away from oil, but staying in the same general area, the government will take initiative will, uh, well, with irrigation programs to boost food security, alleviate poverty, conserve the environment, and increase access to clean water, spearheaded by regional development authorities or RDAs. Now, pledging to prioritize and increase funding to these state holds. Well, Elvis Kosge now reports from Tuckwell. While addressing the press after visiting Tuckwell and Oiwei, Principal Secretary of State Department Planning and Statistics, Irungu Nyakera, observed that regional development authorities have performed exemplary in engaging communities and improving their livelihoods. According to Nyakera, Kerio Valley Development Authority has done well in establishing projects like Napua and Oiwe irrigation schemes in Turkana and West Pokot counties. Uh, because these are projects that are uh, purely geared towards uh, relieving the issues of uh, food security, uh, guaranteeing uh, water uh, for uh, the populace. And, and so these are pro projects and programs that are very critical. Uh, to the government and as part uh, of the manifesto fulfillment. A uh, lower Tukwil project, as you know, is a project that should have been done about 27 years ago. Uh, and the Jubilee government now is looking at uh, uh, implementing it, that 5,000 hectares that uh, would be very appropriate for a cash crop, at the same time also uh, uh, crops for food security. And the plan is to have 30,000 nucleus, uh, which will be used for uh, sugar cane farming and uh, 5,000 hectares uh, that will be given to community to plant uh, their food crops. The government plans to prioritize authorities to roll out similar flagship projects, including construction of multi-purpose dams to increase access to water and ensure the 350,000 hectares under its area are gradually put under irrigation. Uh, we've so far visited two projects. Uh, the first one was the Tuckwell Gorge uh, project, uh, Tuckwell uh, Dam, uh, where we are looking at uh, uh, an irrigation uh, program that could uh, cover about 30,000, 35,000 uh, hectares. And then today we've, we are now presently at the Weiwei uh, Pro Irrigation Project, uh, which, uh, as you know, the phase, that phase was launched by the president uh, last year. Uh, we've been getting about a thousand tons, and uh, with the uh, phase three uh, being ready, this should uh, have uh, the annual production of about 2,000 tons. 
and, and that would probably give the farmers here a slightly over 160 to 200 million uh, Kenyan shillings annually. One of the other benefits of this project is, uh, apart from food security, we are also working hard to make sure that um, it affects uh, security situations, becomes a, a, an incentive for communities to live in peace so that this cattle rustling and conflict that is prevalent in this region becomes a thing of the, of the past. So we are trying to have our model where we can demonstrate to the rest of the country that when people have food and you engage them in these development projects, they can actually forge uh, positive relationships which will be useful in national cohesion and reconciliation. Irungu Kimosop and KVDA Chairman Sam Kona later on surveyed a role in El Geomaraquet, Takwell and Weiwei in West Pokot, where multipurpose dams are set to be constructed from July. Elvis Kusgei, KT News, West Pokot County. Well, moving on, banks are working closely with their association, the regulator and the National Treasury to operationalize the new movable assets registry and the related law in order to make credit more affordable and accessible to Kenyans. According to NIC Bank CEO John Gashara, a lot of innovation will be required to enable Kenyans reap the full benefits as intended under the framework. He spoke as General Motors East Africa GMEA and NIC Bank announced an asset financing partnership that will see corporates, SMEs and individual customers access financing on Isuzu vehicles at a low interest rate of up to 13% for up to a period of six years. The partnership which was announced at GMEA offices will also see Isuzu customers receive a 60-day grace period on payments and a one insurance cover for one year through Fidelity Insurance. This cover includes general cartage and excess protection for one year for all Isuzu trucks, FRL trucks, and both double and single cup DMAX pickups. And uh, to tell you the truth, um, the operational, operationalization is still going on. Uh, the actual movable register, which is the basis upon which this law will operate, has actually not been put in place yet. Uh, we are working together with government, we are getting trained. Uh, to, to ensure that when it comes into play, we are ready to use it. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it's something that uh, will hopefully help the, um, the economy. There, there, there are still a few things to be ironed out. Uh, we cannot say that for sure it's 100% done. Uh, but uh, we're working closely as industry players and with government to ensure that uh, its, intended, um, its intended effects are felt in the near future. We have assessed the a situation uh, between uh, the next two months uh, and uh, came, came up with a very innovative product that will cushion our customer during this uh, election period in terms of uh, continuing with their business and supporting their cash flow uh, operation. So this program is uh, uh, targeting, again, as I mentioned, the SME. Well, that move there, of course, is sent to benefit uh, small businesses, SMEs and MSMEs. And speaking of those people, Kenya, Kenya is set to join the rest of the world in celebrating the International Day of Cooperatives, locally known as Ushirika Day, on the 1st of July 2017 at Uhurupak. That is this Saturday. The theme of this year's celebration is inclusion, well, uh, to ensure that no one is left behind. This echoes the core principles of voluntary and open membership, democratic control, and economic participation. Ushirika Day is an important event in the calendar of the cooperative movement worldwide. It is marked to reflect on the contributions made by the movement in improving the living standards of communities around businesses, of course, and right across the world. According to the principal Secretary of State Department for Cooperatives, Ali Nur Ismail, Cooperatives in Kenya are a success which has earned the country number one ranking in Africa and the seventh best globally. In addition, cooperatives have contributed towards poverty reduction, employment creation and foreign exchange earnings. Well, that gentleman himself is here in studio, uh, Ali Nur Ismail. He is the PS for cooperatives. Of course, 
is a part of the Ministry of uh, Trade Industrialization. It's a long title right there, sir. But Karibu Sana. Asante. Also, Thank of course, you, accompanying you is uh, Dolphin Arumo. She is the Director of Cooperatives in Nairobi County. Yes. Thank yes. you to you for coming. Yes. I think a good place to start uh, for us is to, of course, uh, take stock of where the cooperative movement has gotten Kenyans so far. Uh, the fact that uh, indeed for a lot of people this has been a bedrock of their existence and uh, for their livelihoods. Do you think we have paid enough attention to our cooperatives in the, over the past few years to enable them, uh, to enable us say that they are actually uh, driving the, well, good living standards for Kenyans and business? Uh, thank you, Peter. Yes. Uh, yes, I think the answer to your question is uh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you have uh, very clearly yes. defined mm -hmm. or explained, cooperatives are a group of people who have come together uh, for the socio-economic benefit of their members. Mm -hmm. And uh, the key uh, bedrock of cooperatives really is participation by the members mm -hmm. and democ democratic control mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, regardless of what shares you have, yes. whether I have one share or you have 10 million shares, mm -hmm. we exercise that one vote as a member. Mm -hmm. The role of the government in this respect, really, uh, cooperatives being a voluntary organization of people, has been to provide that enabling environment for cooperatives to thrive so that the members can actually carry on mm -hmm. their cooperative uh, business. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, uh, from around 1965, shortly after independence, the government of Kenya um, has actually uh, provided the, 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 the right legal environment, the mm -hmm. policy environment, and the institutional framework to make cooperatives thrive, uh, you know, in this country. Yes. And it's for that reason that actually cooperatives in Kenya are considered number one in Africa and seventh globally, as you have rightly mm -hmm. said. And mm -hmm. I think maybe to underpin uh, that support that the government has, been, has given the sector and the way the sector has thrived is just to give you a bit of very basic statistics. 14 yes. million members, mm -hmm. more than 22,000 cooperatives, more than 500,000 jobs directly, mm -hmm. about 1.5 million jobs indirectly, assets in excess, especially for financial cooperatives, of more than 800 billion, mm -hmm. uh, savings mobilized of more than 600 billion mm -hmm. uh, Kenyan shillings, yes. and uh, loans in the region of more than 650 billion uh, to the members. Mm -hmm. So on the whole, uh, the sector has, has um, actually is doing well yes. and has done well, and it continues to impact on people's livelihoods yes. and living standards. And I can tell you for a fact that um, if you look at a lot of the people in this country, they have been educated through cooperatives. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it has impacted on health in terms of nutrition, livelihoods. And uh, you will actually realize that uh, if it's not been coffee cooperatives, it's been tea cooperatives. If it's not tea cooperatives, mm -hmm. dairy cooperatives. If it's not mm -hmm. dairy cooperatives, fish and cooperatives. And so it is in every sector of this country, financial, yes. transport, um, agriculture, uh, you know, name it. Yes. So cooperatives uh, today impact on the livelihoods of Kenyans, either indirectly or directly, uh, to the tune of more than two-thirds of the population of Kenya. Yes. I want to bring in uh, Dolphin at this point. Uh, you are in charge of uh, the cooperative movement here in Nairobi County, uh, this being uh, the sort of uh, place where a lot of these are concentrated, especially being the nerve center of the economy. Yes. And uh, do you think uh, that uh, these have been able to achieve the roles that uh, the PS has uh, set out, especially in view of the fact that we are in a free market economy. Have they been able to enable, uh, have they been able to enable uh, the members uh, come and participate in this economy at an advantageous level compared to everyone else? Uh, I would say yes, for one reason. If you look at uh, the cooperatives in Kenya, we have various types of cooperatives. Yes. In Nairobi specifically, a lot are circles, mm -hmm. the so-called savings and credit. Yes. The transport cooperatives are so vibrant. The Matatu cooperative sector, you realize at some point there was a lot of confusion. Yes. We have now mobilized them into cooperatives, the so-called circles. Mm -hmm. And they are able to mobilize savings. And they are able to get loans at very reasonable interest rates. If you go along Mombasa Road to Kitangela and throughout the country, housing cooperatives have assisted members to acquire shelter. Mm -hmm. Because what happens, they benefit from economies of scale. When you buy this land in bulk, it becomes cheaper. So they subdivide and they are able to bring up houses for them. Mm -hmm. And in our training sessions, we normally encourage them. Other than mobilizing the savings, they also need to make good use of the loans that they take. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is, at one point or the other, the people who are employed will at some point retire. 
So what is the point of retiring to go home to the village? Mm -hmm. You can still take care of yourself here. Yes. But if you have shelter, somebody is not knocking on your door every month to pay rent, then I think you are good to go. Mm -hmm. So I would say we have done so much as a cooperative sector. You mentioned the long title, it's Ministry of Industry, Trade and Cooperatives, yes. and we are a State Department of Cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of vibrancy. Yes. Nairobi alone has mobilized over 200 billion. The PS talked about the national statistics, yes. where we have mobilized savings to the tune of 600 billion, total assets to the tune of 800 billion. Mm -hmm. Nairobi takes the bigger pie. A mm -hmm. third of it comes from Nairobi. Yes. Nairobi is where you have most of the giant cooperatives. We call them giant cooperatives. The Arambe, the Kenya Police, most of them are domiciled there. Mm -hmm. And so the savings culture that we have inculcated in these people have done a good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's bring the PS again and the, the, the fact that, uh, as you said, we have this long history with yes. the cooperatives, sure. uh, but uh, they continue to drive us in the modern age. What is the role of technology uh, in bringing this into the future, especially knowing that we now have this group called millennials who are trying to come into the same fold uh, but in a totally different way? Yes. Thank you, Peter. Uh, of course, I think we are in the technology age. Yes. And really the future is really uh, about technology. Uh, I think um, cooperatives have not been left uh, behind um, and uh, cooperatives have started to embrace technology. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if not for anything else, uh, really to, to, for, for, for in order to be able to uh, give uh, efficient and effective service to their members. Yes. And in this respect, you realize that a lot of the cooperatives, particularly the financial cooperatives, the big circles, yes. uh, especially those that are regulated uh, under the Circle Society's regulatory authority, so that's right. mm -hmm. uh, a lot of who have, uh, a lot of which have actually uh, FOSA, front mm -hmm. office savings uh, um, activity, mm -hmm. uh, which is more like a bank. Yes. Uh, they're, they're, they're actually on a technology platform, which is online real time, mm -hmm. because members can come in, deposit their money, uh, you know, withdraw their money, uh, and, and even a lot of the ones that have back office uh, savings activity, they have also uh, embraced technology. So the movement has not been left behind. But of course, as you know, technology is um, capital intensive. Yes. Uh, and not all cooperatives, because of their size, are able to actually immediately invest. But it's something that uh, those who have not actually done so are looking at. Mm -hmm. But the more other important reason, as you have rightly said, is that yes. uh, if you look at this country now, um, uh, nearly 65% of the population are people who are 35 and below, yes. the younger people, uh, the ones that you have referred to as the min, uh, millennials. Mm -hmm. And that means that um, the traditional forms or modes of uh, actually providing service to them, mm -hmm. uh, as the corporates used to do in the yesteryears, will not do. Because these are people who transact everything around their life, around this little gadget called the mobile. Yes. And so then corporates, therefore, are looking for opportunities using, uh, uh, you know, mobile applications, uh, other, other technological applications to try and see how we can actually bring young people. Mm -hmm. Because if you talk about the sustainability of the corporate movement uh, and you talk about tomorrow, you're actually talking about the young people in this yes. country. Mm -hmm. They are the members today, tomorrow's leaders in that sector, yes. and even tomorrow's customers mm -hmm. or members of that movement. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, technology is critical uh, not only for service delivery, for efficiency and effectiveness, but for the future sustainability of the corporate movement. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to bring you back in, Dolphin, with yeah. the question on uh, uh, consumer education and how this plays a role in recruiting new members. As the uh, circles continue to, well, drive this economy, so to say, they need fresh blood. And the fact that uh, people keep, uh, as you said, retiring, uh, getting out and, and going to other things. What is the place of teaching people the benefits of uh, circles uh, in uh, driving membership and uh, ensuring that uh, we keep driving this thing forward? Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. You realize that every year we also do elections. Yes. We are one third retires. Mm -hmm. And we encourage the youth because we also have youth cooperatives. Mm -hmm. We encourage the youth to also take up these positions. Of course, they are competitive positions. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the principles of cooperatives is education, training, mm -hmm. and information. Mm -hmm. And so every year, we organize those education forums, yes. even at the sub-county levels, so that people are enlightened on the importance of not just joining a cooperative, making the cooperatives impact positively on the livelihoods of these people. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a continuous process. During the time of registration, we have an activity called pre-cooperative education, mm -hmm. where we enlightened the proposed members on the importance of joining the cooperative, so that when they get to the cooperative, they not look at it like something that they are forced into. Yes. Because most of the employer-based cooperatives, you are employed into an organization and you are expected to join. Mm -hmm. At that point, some people think it's a mandatory thing. But later, the way we give them education, they realize mm -hmm. that this is something that assists them individually. Yes. In fact, now we even encourage them to save, not just for loans, mm -hmm. but also for retirement. Yes. And uh, we have also advised them to open up their common bonds. Initially, we used to say, if you're employed by a particular organization, then the membership has to be drawn from there. Mm -hmm. We have since advised them to open their common bond, which requires the amendment of their bylaws, so that they can even bring in their spouses, they can bring in their children, because we want continuity into the organization. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, Bernard Pierce, I want to finish with yes. you and uh, with a simple question. International linkages, the rest of the world has uh, cooperatives also driving them at various levels. Yes. What is the place for partnerships across borders in ensuring that we as Kenyans continue to enjoy the full benefits of the movement? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me say that uh, Kenya having mm -hmm. uh, started very early mm -hmm. uh, on the cooperative model, uh, we have been uh, lucky, as I said earlier, to actually have made a lot of progress. Uh, as a consequence, Kenya actually has been a beacon in mm. terms of learning best practice yes. uh, for the Africa, con Africa continent. And in that respect, we have been instrumental in actually starting up or helping a number of African countries uh, to start their cooperative business model. Yes. Uh, and right now, as I talk to you, we are implementing an MOU with the uh, uh, government of Namibia, or Republic of Namibia, uh, who are actually setting up, uh, since independence, their first public servants uh, corporate society, the mm -hmm. equivalent of our Harambe, mm -hmm. yes. Harambe Sako. Mm -hmm. uh, we have worked with, the, with Rwanda, yes. um, Rwanda, and in fact, uh, not only did we work with them, we even gave them seed cows for their dairy sector. Today, yes. that uh, dairy corporate in, 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 in Rwanda is actually a thriving uh, cooperative movement. Mm -hmm. We have also worked with uh, Sudan, yes. Southern Sudan, you know, been a nascent country. Mm -hmm. We have two of our officers there. Uh, they have been there for the last, um, you know, uh, uh, three years. We have now renewed their stay there again, mm -hmm. and they're actually helping this uh, Republic of Southern Sudan to, mm -hmm. to actually uh, set up their cooperative movement. Yes. We have worked with Botswana, um, you know, and we are working with, um, uh, uh, you know, countries like Zambia, Malawi, and they come. So every other time we have a delegation that comes to benchmark with us and yes. to learn. Of course, we also learn something from them in the process. But uh, that is at the continental level. But let yes. me also talk about uh, the international uh, yes. level. Mm -hmm. At the international level, we have a lot of partnerships yes, very uh, good. with some of the leading cooperative, uh, which are giants actually compared to ours, mm -hmm. in uh, countries like Canada, the US, uh, you know, um, uh, you know um, countries like um, uh, France, yes. you know, Belgium, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and Kenya is actually a member of uh, the uh, World uh, Council of Credit Unions. Yes. Uh, we, Kenya, we sit in the board, the only African country that sits in the board. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman who sits in that board is the MD of Cusco, which yes. is the umbrella body for the SACO, mm -hmm. Mr. George Ototo. Uh, Kenya is also a member of the global uh, regulatory body for, for, for SACOs, yes. or what's called credit union in the Western world, like the US and America. And the MD, the CEO of, uh, of uh, SASRA, yes. uh, sits in that board. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also a member of the continental body, yes. ACOSCA, Africa Confederation of um, you know, uh, Service and Credit Corporates, which is actually hosted in Nairobi originally yes. for Africa. Mm -hmm. And we have a Kenyan who is also the CEO. Mm -hmm. of the continental body. Okay. So we have partners, mm -hmm. partner, partnerships and collaborations across the continent and beyond the continent. <coughs> yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, we have to cut it short right there because we are out of time. But mm -hmm. it is an interesting discussion and one that we will definitely continue to take up come Saturday because the cooperative movement mm -hmm. uh, literally carries every Kenyan along. But to say thank you for both of you to Allow me to say in. a parting shot, please. Uh, maybe very quickly. Because yes, I would like to invite all the cooperators in this country to come to Huru Park on Saturday. We'll have yes. a procession from 7.30 from Okulema Market to Huru Grounds. Yes. We have to show cause on what we have done as a cooperative movement. Mm -hmm. So please come the with president. your families, the come in good numbers. Yes. And President. our president, yes. His Excellency, 
will be the chief guest. Okay. So we are privileged and honored, honored to have the president as the guest. Okay. Please come in good numbers. Yes. Thank Indeed, you. Uh, well, as I was saying, thank you very much for taking thank the time you. to come in. And just remind our viewers, of course, that uh, the chief guest of that event will be the president. So, of course, do take the time to turn out in large numbers. We now want to proceed on a short commercial break, but on the other side of that break, of course, we will